SpaceX was supposed to launch a third Falcon the very next day, Thursday, but the Falcon 9 rocket triggered an automatic shutdown at T-30 seconds due to a small helium leak. Now, helium isn't explosive. In fact, it is the least reactive of all elements, but that very quality makes it perfect for pressurizing fuel tanks, which is what it's used for in the Falcon 9. The launch did happen on Friday, though, delivering Galaxy 33 and Galaxy 34 communication satellites into a geostationary transfer orbit. As I mentioned last week, NASA's only 4K UHD broadcast is transmitted via the Galaxy 13 satellite, part of the same constellation operated by Intelsat. Unfortunately, that UHD broadcast typically does not include live events such as launches, dockings, landings, things like that. It's mainly just Earth view replays and vignettes from on board the space station. But here we are with the launch. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And lift off of Falcon 9. Go Falcon, go Intel Sat Galaxy 33 and 34. Falcon 9 is pitching down right here. Now, we're accustomed to some pretty amazing views, particularly from SpaceX launches, and this one did not disappoint. SpaceX's camera tracking system did a stellar job of locking onto the rocket during staging and fairing separation, as we'll see in a moment in this sped-up replay. Stage separation confirmed. I'm back in condition. There we go, those three events back-to-back. -back. So with that, the first stage will start making its way back to planet Earth for recovery. Our second stage has a pretty long burn to go. Next major milestone here will be coming up at about T plus three and a half minutes. That'll be fairing deployment. Look at that, you see the little RCS thrusters puffing on the uh, upper stage on the, on the upper right, and then to the lower left is the first stage booster. Uh, and there is the, f wait a minute, no, I'm sorry. You were looking at the, uh, the, uh, the first stage on the upper right, and on the left was the upper stage, and the fairings separated uh, from the upper stage. So those RC, those uh, thrusters uh, puffs were were reorienting the uh, first stage booster for reentry and landing again on the drone ship. And then the space jellyfish. The drone ship cam captured a fantastic view of the launch plume backlit by the sunset, which we'll see here. Stage one, landing burn. Landing burn start up. Cut off. You just heard the call out there for second engine cut off on the second stage. Stage one, landing light deploy. Stage one landing is confirmed. Awesome. Successful Stage landing orbit insertion. on our drone ship about Expected six. Losses. I love how it lined up perfectly so that you can see the first stage booster land with its own launch plume in the background. That's incredible. But I apologize. I did accidentally skip. Let me jump back to the previous video. Now here's the here's where the here's where they actually mentioned the jellyfish. It was actually a little more brilliant uh, before the landing. Uh, by the time of the landing, the sun had gone down. Uh, it was a few more couple minutes later. The sun had gone down further a little bit bo below the horizon and didn't quite illuminate the the plume in the background quite as as much as it did here. So let's check this out. Three of the Merlin 1D engines, starting with the center engine, and then two of the radial engines. And that, that's amazing. That's a great view. You can see uh, we just launched at the perfect time here. So we're catching sunlight 
off of the top of the Earth's atmosphere. It's reflecting off of the plume of the rocket. Uh, I love to call this this. this I should have uh, muted that because of the music, uh, which I'll get to later. Here, let's let's freeze frame that sucker. That was uh, one of the most amazing shots of a SpaceX launch I've ever seen from the drone ship of the rocket ascending on its way to land on that very same drone ship. It's uh, just an incredible, uh, uh, just good timing and, and alignment of everything. But um, now launches are not about landings though, they're about payloads. So here is the satellite deployment of those two galaxy satellites. Galaxy 34, deploy confirmed. And Galaxy 34 going off to join the constellation and its partner satellite, Galaxy 33. This was, or that was, one of the most photogenic SpaceX launches yet. Unfortunately, for those of us who restream these things, the music monetizer Vidya has been inundating us with copyright claims on the space jams that SpaceX plays during their broadcasts, before, after, and then during their coast phases. Uh, they never used to generate claims, but now they do. I disputed a bunch of them. At first, my disputes were accepted, and the claims were released. But lately, Vidya has been rejecting my disputes and doubling down on their claims. And I've been loath to, uh, I've been hesitant to uh, appeal their rejections because that elevates the matter to uh, uh, the level where YouTube gets involved. And if I'm wrong, and they do have a valid claim, then I could get copyright strikes on my channel. Uh, three copyright strikes, and I could lose the channel. So uh, I'm not about to do that unless I'm absolutely sure uh, that I'm on solid ground. So, um, yeah, I really need to figure out the specific song names and artists that are being claimed, since the artist info is suspiciously hidden in Vidya's claims, which I've mentioned before, and then reach out directly to those artists, both test stop test shot starfish or any others that happen to be uh, represented and then uh, ask them what their own copyright desires are for the songs just to be clear because it was my understanding that it was okay to rebroadcast uh, those songs in context as they were used in the SpaceX uh, uh, streams but again I want to get that straight from the artists themselves. Now, the copyright claim system on YouTube is ridiculous. It is rife with fraud and hugely inconvenient, uh, not to mention costly for channels that are monetized, but let's not open that can of worms again right now. Uh, I would pay serious money if an audio engineer out there were able to provide me with a way to automatically silence or otherwise mask music in a live media stream. Uh, I'm serious about that. I'm a career computer programmer myself, but I've never worked with audio, and I don't think I have the brain cells to tackle that uh, that uh, tricky a problem. 